Learning to swim is an essential skill that can save your life. As we begin our focus on water safety, let's take a look at one mother's cautionary tale, and I want to warn you, it might be difficult to watch. Soraya Morgan Stevens, she was born August 8th, 2016. She was my little firecracker. It was a normal day, Sunday afternoon. Um, everyone was at my mom's house, uh, you know, friends, uh, family gathered. She and I were in the room and uh, my mom came into the room and said, uh, you always have her cooped up in here. Let's, let me take her out to go get something to eat. Um, so they, you know, left to go eat her mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I remember her closing the door behind her. Then I heard this gut-wrenching scream. It was really loud. I see my cousin running with Soraya in her arms. And my cousin, she's a nurse. So she was administering CPR on Soraya, her little body, and ambulance came. They got her. We went to the hospital. When we got there, I just remember someone saying, we're sorry. Your daughter didn't make it. She was 23 months old. By sharing my story, I know it helps at least one family not to go through what me and my family are going through. My Soraya Love Bugs, I started that just to honor her and to bring awareness to, you know, drowning. It's an Instagram and Facebook page that I have. Drowning is 100% preventable. Just be aware of your surroundings uh, because kids are quick. They're fast. They can be here one minute and you're like, where'd they go? If you're around water, to have someone be your water watcher at all times, you know, like, hey, you're gonna be the water watcher for an hour, switch up, because a kid can be literally drowning in front of you and you won't know because drowning is not like the movies. It's quick and silent, it can happen under 30 seconds. Dr. Johnson, I wanna start with you. Just watching that mom's story, it's so heartbreaking. As a physician, talk about You've seen this scenario before, unfortunately. What do parents need to do to keep their children safe? Yeah, um, you know, that's not an uncommon story. Unfortunately, the Sarayas of the world, uh, drowning is the leading cause of death for children one to four. Uh, so uh, it really is a common story and a, and a very sad story. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, Soraya's mother really gave excellent advice as to what you need to do is your eyes have to be you know on your children you have to be thinking all the time about the water and I think about my own experience as a parent when I had young children the first place I always went to look if I couldn't you know lay eyes mm -hmm. on them was let me check in the pool mm -hmm. if they haven't you know uh, if I haven't found them because that was and then I would go from there yeah. uh, so you have to be aware um, the advice that she said about somebody always looking at uh, the children if they are playing near the water, that you have somebody that's designated that is your job until you give that job to somebody else to look at the water. And another point that she made that I really want to emphasize is that drowning is often a silent event. Mm -hmm. We think about it like the movies where you know, people are splashing and yelling help. And particularly with children, when they're drowning, they just go under. And there are other kids playing around. Sometimes adults are standing in the water with them, and nobody pays, nobody notices. Mm -hmm. So you really have to have people who are designated uh, to do that. And then I'm sure we'll talk some more about um, you know, other things that we can do to make our children safe mm -hmm. if they do inadvertently get into the water or, or um, have trouble. Because most of the time, when children drown, it's, it's when they get involved in water, and that was not the intention. So mm -hmm. they inadvertently get into the water. So. 
Right. They're there for another reason. It's not a, a or they're a around. Swimming. They just yeah. right. They just happen to fall into yeah. into you know a body, body of water, water and that wasn't the intent for them to go swimming. Tara, I want to bring you into this. I mean, you were in charge of the swimming programs at the YMCA. We heard in the piece about having a water watcher. I know that there are layers of protection or things that you discuss uh, at the Y and keeping kids safe. What are some of those and, and what do you tell parents? And how, how young can you start a child in learning how to swim? Um, all great questions, 100%. <laughs> yeah. um, there are, you know, we teach three layers of drowning prevention from barriers um, in the fact that you have to have the pool protected with a gate and that it's a safety measure or there's some form of alarm that sounds that says someone has entered the water um, into the, the concept of supervision and what a water watcher is. And that is a commitment to someone that has zero distractions, no cell phones, no alcoholic beverages, no conversations. Um, you know, we have a full campaign where we give out a water watcher. It has a water watcher pledge on the back where you make a commitment that you're dedicated to that. Um, and that stands for any body of water. People will say that and instantly assume it's just a pool. Um, but, you know, Florida does lead the nation in drownings um, because we have so many bodies of water between our lakes, our pools, our beaches and canals. Um, children can drown in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. If you are in a space that there is water around, someone has to be committed to being the water watcher. Um, and and our, our final and last you know, drowning prevention piece is obviously swim lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and it is critical. We teach as young as six months and all the way up through adults. Um, we truly believe that um, swim lessons it is a life skill. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a leisure activity. Yes, it's a sport. But it is a life skill that every single person should have the opportunity to learn because it is drowning is preventable. It can, um, it can happen in a matter of a second. It can happen anywhere. Um, and it is a, a mission of ours to change that statistic and to drive the fact that um, it's 100% preventable. And we, we all are a part of that mission. Mr. Pitts, you have been teaching swimming for over 30 years. Talk about how important it is to do this. And, and how do you teach the children? How do you engage them in, in swimming that it's fun, they're having a good time, but they also are learning a skill that's going to possibly save their lives? Well, I've been actually teaching swimming. Uh, over 50 years. Okay. People might find it. You just look so young. Despite my, <laughs> <laughs> despite my youthful appearance. Uh, interesting story though, I actually started teaching swimming when I was 10, so that's how it works okay. out. Um, I, I was fortunate enough growing up in the inner city, mom raising seven kids by herself, housing projects, the whole works. But we luckily we had a swimming pool up the, up the street that was uh, left over from White Flight. Uh, some of these people here know about White Flight. And so I was introduced to swimming, and I learned to swim uh, at a really early age. I couldn't afford to go swimming, so I paid for my own swim lesson by hustling soda bottles in the community where I had to get uh, 10 soda bottles to go swimming each day. It was 50 cents, so financially it was a barrier, but I got past that. And then I got discovered, and they put me in the Learn to Swim program, mm -hmm. uh, put on by the Boys and Girls Club, Red mm -hmm. Cross, and all that. So I became, And then they started letting me help assist. Once I got accomplished by 10 years old, I was pretty on the swim team when I was advanced, and they started letting me help them teach other black kids how to swim. So I started, I was around it at a young age. Now, one of the great things about swimming is as it relates to children. It's not like piano lessons or anything that you have to drag the kid to. It's not a math class. Kids love swimming. That's why I ended up going swimming. Before all the fancy conversations and the future that I'm sitting in now happen, mm -hmm. I just wanted to go swimming for fun. Okay, and luckily I got formal swimming lessons. So I would say, one, is that it is a necessity and it should be made a high priority by parents. Uh, and that um, access to opportunities, swimming programs in communities, learn to swim programs, moving from the segregated history and all the barriers that were put up in the past, of course, they existed. But what about right now, okay? So taking responsibility right now, like the good doctor said, to getting kids into swimming programs. Now, one may say, 